here rolling. Right. So we have Igor Cavalera, former Sepultura drummer, current Cavalera conspiracy drummer. Uh, how's it going, man? Great, great. We're having a good time and uh, enjoying playing some uh, good music. I mean, you know, like EMX, every night having a blast on stage, you know, playing some old stuff, some new stuff. and uh, Good deal. It's just been a lot of fun, more than anything. So, can it be expected that there's like some of Torah and maybe even nail bomb songs in the set? Yeah, like we always throw a lot of that stuff, you know, like... Actually, on this tour we haven't played that much nail bomb stuff. That's... Uh, we did more on, on, on the other one. But on this one there's a lot of stuff in between the first Cavalera, the second Cavalera, and then some Sepultura stuff. So, I think nail bomb it's kind of like being left off, so... Actually, I should talk to Max about this. Maybe we should try to squeeze at least one nail bomb song in there, you know. Yeah. Actually, with, with that being said, um, one of our listeners was actually curious. Is, is there any chance of another nail bomb album in the future? Or is well, that something you'd... No, I think that was something that Max made very clear. Like, he, he killed nail bomb. Right. You know, it was like something that he wanted to have a, a beginning and, and an end to it. That, that was just a definitive... Yeah, just one yeah. time off we're gonna do this and yeah and it was still was something that it was very clear it was not like one of those projects when you don't really know what you're gonna do and how you're gonna go about it but we now bomb he, he definitely had a kind of like a, a history that he knew it was gonna start and end and that's it you know like he, he has another ideas for different projects but now bomb that was it you know and we still do have a good time playing those songs and cool. but like to do another album and things like that, I think it's it's done. Um, how's the reception been for the, your current band Kevlar Conspiracy? You know, I know a lot of fans are like, hey, when's Sepultura gonna get back together with the original lineup? But how has the uh, reception been for your current band Kevlar Conspiracy? Well it's been it's been great. I mean we have a really amazing response like this whole tour we did already South America we, we've been pretty much everywhere with the two albums so far and to be honest I, I don't really feel like we should be that much worry about the whole tour of you know like well, you know, they're, they're I'm very much satisfied you know myself I, I play with Max and that's how Sepultura we started you know in the beginning it was me him in the bedroom having crazy ideas and then the other guys came in and of course they're part of the history but I don't know I'm pretty satisfied and who, who got to see Sepultura with different lineups through the whole history that is that you know what I mean like I don't I don't really feel like there's much of a need of the, the reunion yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it would be cool for whatever to happen but you know as long as you're still like you're in the moment you're enjoying what you're doing you know there's nothing yeah. wrong with that at all and you're also still young enough that, you know, you could all, who knows? Yeah, I mean, it just in, in the way I see it, it's like, I don't really feel the need for it. You know, I absolutely have a really good time, you know, with Max. We play songs that, like, Troops of Doom that we wrote together when we were, like, 15. And those songs that we play live still, like, an amazing energy. And those songs are based in, you know, like power, not based in fashion and, and things like that. That today a lot of bands are based in, you know, like hype and things like that. So, yeah, you know, that, that, that's cool. You know, that's, you, that's good. You know, you mentioned that, and that's actually one of the things that stood out. You know, when I first started seeing photos of you guys back in the '80s, and I'm like, you guys were like so not what was because they, you know, there's like the hair metal scene, which you know, it's like okay for what it was if you were into it. But then you had you guys it was like these guys you, you, you look so grim and serious and like you were right like, you were like ready to get out kick ass take names and that's exactly what you did yeah. and, and also at the same time not really worrying so much about the image that was something that we always were about you know it's just like how we are yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we play the music and, and exactly the itself, it's it's cool of course but it's also not the most important thing like i said Playing, you know, a song like Troops of Doom, that's important, no matter how we look on stage, you know, like, that was not, like, 
what we were worrying about if we were wearing shorts or pants or things like that, you know what I mean? Like, right. So it's, for me, that's, that's what it's really cool. You know, it was what came out of the speakers more than how we looked in the pictures. You know? Exactly. Now, do you currently still reside in Brazil when you're not on tour? Yeah, I, I live in Sao Paulo, but I do a lot of uh, traveling. I also have a different project, more experimental my wife with like electronic music mm -hmm. so I, I'm, I'm very uh, not that much at home you know so I wish I could be more at home but in between what I do with my wife and what I do with Max it's, it's been tough what's the name of your uh, electronic it's called mix mix hell mm -hmm. and it's you know it's something that I've been doing for about like five years and it's you know it's a lot of fun also play for a completely different audience Something more experimental, like not, not so much like a, an audience that goes to see a show. It's something more like about sounds and, and something that I already did in, in all, all the Sepultura days, experimenting more with, uh, with beats like and drums tribal drums and things, but a little more like with a lot of uh, editing and, and putting together lots of layers of, of drums and things like that. So, is there any? Uh CDs or anything of it? No, no. That no. Or is that just more live-based? Yeah, it's like a, more like a live experience and there's some edits that we put out and download and things like that. Um, so, when, when did you and Max actually get started play, playing different bands? Like, well, first time thought about like really getting together when we were like 11 years old, that was like 1981, that's when we really wanted to perform like a, a, like a rock metal band, that was the thing. And then 84 is when we finally did something concrete like a Bessie of Devastation, the first split with Overdose. So from, from 81 to that was the period that we were just, you know, like trying out different things and playing like very underground, like uh, not even clubs, more like friends, parties, and you know, houses and things like that. Any place you could plug in basically and just yeah, yeah, jam. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, like a lot of uh, support from our family and support from friends that let us play and we had from day one, that was something that was very important. From day one, we had very few people that liked our music. Because those very few people that were very uh, fanatic about it. And that was something that for us was very, very important. You know, it was like, wow, we have one in one fan, but that fan is mad about what we do. And that was something that always stuck to us. It was like, you know, it was better than have a million fans that like you and then tomorrow they will turn your back on what you do. Something like that. Now, you have a couple of kids now, right? I have five. You have five, five kids, yeah. Um, being, going out on tour and stuff, how does that, uh, how does that interact with the family? Like, does that take, take its toll and not get to see family that much? Or? It, it, is, it is a big sacrifice, like touring and then being out and doing things of course there's times when you really hate that you're missing a lot of cool stuff that's happening at home but there's also a lot of times when I think about it that it's it's better that you do something that you love and, and you can support your family and what you do than having a dad at home that don't like what they do and sometimes they can be miserable being there so I think it, it's all about a balance Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes my kids, they don't see me as much, but when they see me, we have a really quality time together, and they know that I, I work very hard since I was like, I don't know, like we said, like 14, I've been working my ass off with music, and I think that's, you know, it's the same, like I look at my grandfather and my father, and they were like also very hardworking people, and I think that's, you know, that's what it's important, you know what I mean, rather than someone sitting at home and not doing anything and complaining about and that's that's for me that's uh, depressing and to see you know I don't want my kids to see that it's exactly. you know, 
or to turn into that. I want to set like an example that whatever you do, if it's even if it's not music, if it's whatever, arts, uh, sports, anything, just that work hard and you know, if you're lucky enough to do what you love, it's even better. Oh, um, good deal. What's that better for you, playing overseas festivals or playing playing the U.S.? I think the thing is, it's it's different because it's like in the U.S. There's not that many festivals like the European festivals. They're very established in the in the sense that they they already have a way that you know people know. They're gonna happen every year. They travel. They make plans. They they take their time off from work and things like that. And they know they're gonna go to see their favorite bands. And so I think the U.S. is missing out on doing things like that, setting certain you know like certain metal fest or rock or any kind of music. But you do yearly things where people can plan ahead and have something that will happen every year and become like an annual thing. So it could be something that, you know, it, it would be almost like a, something that you could plan ahead, like years and years, you know, like I know in two years I'm going to take my kid to see this festival. And, you know, I think America is missing out on those things where in Europe I can see that people, they know already what they're going to be doing. They're going to go to whatever, Hellfest in, in France. And they already download plans, or back download, in or in all those yeah. festivals they, they already know every year and then you know lineups they change between what's going on but still they keep it you know a solid lineup where people enjoy you know music so I think that's one of the difference between the US and Europe and we, we get to participate on a lot of those festivals in Europe so I think it's you know it's something that it could change you know over the years that we've been you know, traveling a lot, I just wish that U.S. Would, uh, would get together with more you know, sponsors and, and, and people involved in music and, and make something like that. I thought that Lollapalooza was a fine example at one point in the 80s. That could, that could work, and, but at the same time it, it didn't. Also because of many different you know, things, you know, like lawsuits and things that culturally are different in Europe than in the U.S. You know? uh, going back to the situation of your kids, are any of your kids currently in bands? Are they all they, play? Yeah, they, they love, you know, like to play, but they're, they haven't really start like a band. Max's kids, they're a little older, and they, they already have like a band with demos and things like that. Cool. My kids, they still like in the, in the like, they have a band, on paper, yeah. like they're drawing their covers and they show me it's, it's, but they still like they don't rehearse it's, just, it's still in their head which is really cool also because I remember those days when I had all these bands in my mind and I told people about it but they were just you know dream bands that me and Max had and those are the whole, the whole cool, brainstorming cool process the yeah, early yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's very, very cool positive things that yes. you know they become you know later on I was reading the other day about Zion being in the band, and I, yeah. I can remember there was a picture in Metal Maniacs when Zion was first, first born in the mid 90s. Yeah. Max and Gloria holding Zion as a baby. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, crap, that dude's in a band already? Yeah, now he's like a super tall dude, but like, you know, I'm scared of him. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and he, he plays drums like a maniac. I'm like, he's amazing. Cool. Now, haven't they been playing some dates on the tour? They're supposed to be playing the whole tour, but for some reason they like fire some guys in the band and they couldn't do it. Ah. I was looking forward to have them in this tour. Yeah, that would have been but awesome. They, but they didn't, so hopefully on the next tour they'll, they'll get to join us. Now, let me ask you this. A little bit off the topic of several tour and Cavalier conspiracy, but Earth Crisis has been on the tour, and we are here in Syracuse. This is their hometown. Yeah. Are you excited to see what it's going to bring to watch them? Well, actually, they're like me and Max's, you know, handpick for this tour. Like we, we were like, we want to have Earth Crisis. Good deal. We're really excited to see them, you know, home. 
so it's, it's going to be a lot. I'm really excited about tonight. You know, I want to see them, what they're going to do tonight. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Be some good energy. So, it's, I, I, you know, I think it's going to be quite a, quite a show. Yeah. Oh yeah, been pumped for this, definitely. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I've been hearing all about it, so, and uh, me and Max are huge Earth Crisis fans from many, many years, and uh, we're really glad to have them on the board. Very cool. Well, we want to thank you for your time. Thank you. It's definitely been a very cool interview. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, yes, man. Yes, definitely. Thank you very Thanks much. Very cool. All right. Uh,